She's been shot. Call it, Stevie. Call the ambulance. I'm, I'm on it. Easy, man. Easy. Oh, ambulance. Yes, I need an ambulance. It's okay. There's been a shooting. I got you. I got you. You're okay. You're okay. We are Science Sophie. This is Coastal News, a home and away podcast. Your weekly episode companion podcast for your favorite Aussie soap. Oh my God, are you safe, Sophie? Are you inside with the door locked? I am. I'm inside, oh. marked safe from the sniper. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, just about. Just yeah. about. Yeah, I was on my way back from Poland and, and uh, got the news that there was someone, someone about. Oh, my God. Home and away. Oh, God. Sweet. My heart was racing today. And my palms were sweaty. I don't think I felt like this sort of stressed watching Homer's for a while now. <laughs> so, How yeah. good is this? So good. How good is it? So mm. good. Enjoyed. Enjoyed. Uh, well, Fridays was. I mean, I I'm fa- I'm. We'll get on to it. You know, I'll tell you for the next two hours, me me opinions. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> the uh, the movie stuff was corny as, and um, obviously my I'm, I've like commandeered the big TV because I'm like, there's a massive week. It's going to be a shooting. <laughs> Who's going to die? Who knows? And yeah. then he's like laughing all the way through it because it's like corny, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's a bit. <laughs> It's a oh, rom com yeah. though, isn't it? Like I wish I, know. I wish they'd done another horror. I know it doesn't really fit the bay, although we've just had one, haven't we, technically? But you know, something else or an action sort of sequence, because the rom com just it is cheesy as fuck, isn't it? Let's be honest. It's yeah. just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did I text you in the week where my toes I can't <laughs> curl anymore? <laughs> this film. But never mind. It, it was worth it with the payoff was worth it. The oh, yeah. payoff was yeah. worth it because I think I only took two breaths. I made my partner <laughs> jump when I gasped at the Friday cliffhanger, mm. which I was, you know, braced for because you told me there was a mad cliffhanger. I know. Well, um, I watched it. I'd watched it on my lunch break because I was like, I'm going to do tweets mm. along tonight, and I I want to watch this one myself and not yeah. do. Do you know what I mean? Not have yeah. to read Twitter for in half an hour. So I watched it mm. at lunchtime, and then that cliffhanger, I just swore, like, a, just a huge, loud swear word came out um, on my lunch break, thankfully. Um, but, yeah, it was, and then I texted you, and I was like, I need you to get to the end of the episode, because we need to talk about the end. And I, ne- <laughs> I need to talk about it with someone, because I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what on earth? What's going to go on on Monday now? I'm like, oh. No. Oh, God. Between cash and lunch, yeah. And obviously mm. Cash is just going to be out for blood now, isn't he? So he's not going to be thinking straight and, oh, God. Mm, 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 mm. <gasps> yeah, because he's going to be carrying the guilt of not being on post. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Yeah. yeah. Um. But um, how's your week? How are you? Are you all good? I am exhausted. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Ditto. We've just been trying. We've just been discussing our fair, haven't we? Who's the most exhausted? <laughs> You I think it's a tie. Win. No, I think it's a tie. We, I had a nap during work today by accident, and you had a nap straight afterwards. So. I went to bed fully dressed, duvet. Oh, oh. <laughs> highly recommended. Oh dear, um, I, sh- I wish I'd have done that. I had a micro sleep at my desk, and then went. Are my eyes open? No, <laughs> they're not. <laughs> no, but your teams is on orange. Quick, wiggle the mouse. <laughs> It was a bit like that, yeah. Oh dear. Oh, so no, not good. Between you and me, I'd have just phoned myself, muted the call, yeah. and gone to bed. Or I had to do. I, we're having to do like mandatory training at the moment, so I thought I'll do all that on Friday afternoon because I'll be absolutely toast by yeah. then. Yeah. So I'll just sit there, and it, all it is is watching those really, you know, patronising videos, and then answering <laughs> a few questions at the end. I thought I'll do that Friday. And yeah. Fine. But they were so boring that they actually made me <laughs> nod off. <laughs> I passed though. Yay. Well done. Do you not just go straight to the test? You can't. You can't skip the bloody videos on oh, these ones. They make God. you go all the way through. Yeah. Annoying. Oh, God. We all just tell each other answers <laughs> at my place. <laughs> oh, dear. 
it's those annual ones, isn't it? The you know, GDPR and oh yeah, uh, yeah, annoying. health and safety. Yeah. We get consumer rights, data protection, and yeah. uh, oh god, I can't remember. There's about twelve. These must be done by Friday the fifth of July. You <laughs> remind me later. <laughs> you remind me on the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Annoying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right then. So, shall we get into some home and away? You might need to help me. My notes are all over the place. And you know, I'm <laughs> normally, you know, I've normally got this down, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. But the way this week's been, man, so you're going to have to help me out a bit, but you always do. Don't worry. That's fine. I will uh, give you whatever brain that I have left. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> let's, let's get it quick. <laughs> Get a drink in your hand. Do you want oh. your headlines? I do. Peace for salt at last. As Xander bangs his boss's heads together. Tane's court case arrives, but will he make it there on time? Levi has another ultimatum for Eden. And Stevie is shot by her stalker, sending the bay into a frenzied panic. Please take the time to like, subscribe and review Coastal News wherever you source your podcasts and ensure you never miss an episode. Right, Xander at the beginning of the week calls a meeting with Mac and Flick. Boring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he's had enough, hasn't he, um, of them being MIA and him being stuck in the middle. And I must say, I cannot blame the bloke. No. Um, and he basically wants to show them up, hold that mirror up and be like, you two are being, um, I, I can't think of an adjective. Yeah. Childish, yeah, childish. Unpro- unprofessional. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I, yeah. What I love about Xander is he continues to be the voice of the audience, doesn't mm. he? Because I yeah. think we're all at this stage with this, um, yeah. where we're just like, this need, just get over it now, girls. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, and um, and it definitely is the voice of us this week. They sort of agree with him. Like, yeah, mm. this has been a bit difficult. This has been impossible. Um, but nothing, there is no improvement. Like, mm. the day is insane. Another public row breaks out in the, in the um, you know, in the restaurant after Mac mentions Tane and Baby and her guilt oh, yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and after that, Xander tries to comfort Mac as an impartial person, flicks mm. sees it, and then just it all just kicks off again. Mm. Um, and Xander's like, do you know, Xander, Xander, <laughs> Xander's just like, do you know what? F- fuck this, fuck you, I'm off. Yeah, you don't need, you know, I quit. And I, do you know what? I, I, I might have actually clapped watching this because i just thought i you know that you've done you've lasted longer than i would have done lad you know what i mean yeah um he says don't fire me i quit walks out and uh, i think i I think i was tweeting this 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 particular evening and i was like sander your sex points are through the roof right now (laughs) (laughs) oh dear I don't think what happened that, to I don't Xander? Go that far. But yeah, he has become definitely more likable this week, hasn't he? He's become because you just like you say, he's he's saying the stuff we want to say to their face. I want to grab them and, and bang their heads together and scream in their face. And he's doing that for me. So it's like, okay, well at least somebody's doing it. At least you know what I mean. Oh, well, it's just you it's just you screaming into ether at home, just going, somebody do something. It's very frustrating, mm. isn't it? So it is. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm at the point now where I, I'm starting, I, I can't even want to say this publicly, but I'm oh starting God. to side with Mac. Because oh. I'm like, because, because Flick's behaviour is such that I'm like, I can't mm. get on board with it. And, it. and it's gone on so much. Yeah. At this point in the story, I'm like, do you know what? I, I think Max got a point. She needs to just get on with it now. I, I don't think I was ever... T- if it was Team Flick or Team Mac, I don't think I've ever been Team Flick. But from the minute that she did the slow clap when they mm. walked into Salt, I thought she was ridiculous and out of order for that. Mm. Um, mm. Because she's a hypocrite for saying to Mac, oh, dragging him through the business and kissing him in front of everybody and dis- displaying your affair and, like, mm. you know, show, doing it off in front of our customers. And I was like, you've just done something even worse in front of all your customers. 
So my yeah. empathy for Flick went a couple of weeks ago, to be honest with you. But yeah. I'm still not a f- still not fully on board with Mac, I'll be honest. Yeah, I'm not condoning Mac. I'm not saying what you know, I'm not I'm not saying I agree with it, but Flick's pushing me that way. Do mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um and that's a w- that that's a weird place for me to feel like I'm in. Yeah. Like yeah. you know, as as a as a viewer, which is why Xander telling them both to sort mm. it out was was really was long overdue actually. Mm. Um the next morning, I mean, Flick tries to speak to him, doesn't she? And she's like, you know, come back to work, blah, blah, blah. blah. And Xander says what we're all thinking. What has it got to do with you? You need mm-hmm. to get over this. You are going to let Eden's vendetta tear your restaurant apart. Do you mm-hmm. remember Eden, after Flick, you know, confides in her about what's going on and the big row and all that stuff, is saying to her, well, you know what to do. Sell your share of the restaurant. Mm. Really underhand. Yeah. Um, and selfish of Eden. And she, Eden's been doing herself no favours. And as an Eden fan, historically, I was I was watching this through my fingers going, you idiot. Mm. You idiot. Um, and Flick's sort of now, now she's she's at Xander saying come back to work and Xander's saying you are tearing your business apart I'm thinking this he, Flick's going to sell up here and it's just going to be a nightmare doesn't yeah. seem to go anywhere though does it thank the lord no um, I, don't, I don't know whether she was ever re- like really thinking about it because her, when her face kind of she looked really shocked when Eden suggested that when Eden said mm. well, just, just sell the business and she was like oh mm-hmm. like it hadn't even crossed her mind so I yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, as if as if anyone's going to sell their business just because their friend has got in a huff with their brother. You know, it's got nothing to do with Mac, really, that it's just... Yeah, yeah, and Xander says it. And ultimately, an affair between two people, Mac mm. and Levi, it is nothing to do with Flick. It's it is to nothing to do with no. it. Nothing no. to do. It's nothing to do with Xander. When you're no. at work, you're prof- I mean, Xander literally shows us the door, bears the door. And I yes. thought, yes, yes, <laughs> lad. Um, and it, it to, to be honest, and kudos to him, it, it, it's the only thing that gets through to her. You know, yeah. Flick later asks Mac for a word and says, look, we're never going to be right on our personal lives, but professionally we need to make this work. Mm. Um, and when it comes to the business, we need to have each other's back. They actually shake on it, Sophie, mm. and go back and convince Sandra to come back to work. Which I didn't yeah. see didn't see coming ten minutes prior. <laughs> <laughs> um, so reluctantly, he's back on board, and they're gonna they're gonna put their differences aside for the sake of the business. So it's, it it seems Flick hasn't gone down, hasn't taken mm. Eden's advice, and what Xander has said to her seems to have resonated better, which yeah. is promising at best. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's all we can ask for, isn't it? That's all we can ask for. <laughs> uh, hot bit of peace, bit of peace. Um, I must mention very brief. I mean, I've not made loads of notes. Nick, it didn't really happen much this week. But downstairs, in while we're in the surf club talking about sort of ruptures up in salt, downstairs Marley's struggling to rein Kirby in earlier in mm. the week, wasn't he? And um, yeah. Alf clocks it and offers some words of advice about running his own business, and then. Um, Marley lays it all out, doesn't he? Um, and she seems to get on board then. Um, what is your um talking about professional relationships? Um, what is your opinion on sort of Marley, boss Marley struggling to control Kirby? I think that's quite an interesting dynamic because Marley comes across to me as someone who lacks a bit of gusto. Mm. Um and yeah. This has been his passion project, this this board shaping business. Um, and we were saying on last week's podcast, what is the guy doing? Like these these lessons are his backbone, his bread and butter of his of his bottom line. Let her get on with it. Um, but this week he seemed to feel like he needed the last say. Yeah. I mean, this is this is part of our problem with Marley, really. When he first came into this, I felt like he he wasn't this miserable sod, for lack of a better, better like you know, phrase. Mm. 
he mm. was a, he was a bit more likable and genuine and happy go lucky and I don't know what the word is, but ever since he's got the board shop and and all the that sort of responsibility hanging over him and, and he's been in the bay for a while and going out with Rose, he's changed to me and like he is really serious and really moody mm. and it's like it's almost petulant because you know if something doesn't go his way he just goes oh. oh, oh. And instead of having a, like an yeah. adult conversation and say, like he could have just said to Kirby on day one, oh, I know you're doing this as a favour for me and this isn't, you know, you, your career and it isn't your aspiration to be a board shop owner or whatever. And I appreciate you you helping me out. But what would really help me is if you could do this while I do this or if you could ask if you go for a break or if you could let me know what your plans are so I could work my breaks around yours. You know, he hasn't tried to have a dialogue with her. He's just gone, oh, that's she's... true. It's just yeah. so, and it's so childish. It's just like, I don't think it's very good at communication. And I don't think that's a, I think it's a new thing because I, I'm sure he wasn't like this when he first came into the show. It's just something mm. that's been developed as part of his character. I think particularly as, as he's been going out with Rose, I think their communication is absolutely dreadful between the two of them. And again, it's him getting annoyed at her and going, nah, 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 and not actually having that conversation. She gets annoyed with him. And it's a lot of that and not a lot of dialogue, really. So, mm, you know, it's I wound think, me up. It's yeah, you're up. on the money. You're on the money. You know, we, we've we been making jokes about me struggling, <laughs> struggling <laughs> with him. You know, one week this, one week that. Yeah. Um, I think you've just hit the nail on the head. And that's a massive part of why I'm like that with him. Mm. Because I think he shows promise and then he goes, then he reverts. All yeah. the time, yeah. Um, and I don't know. It's preventing me from just going all in with him, you mm. know, and really, really getting behind him. Yeah, yeah. It, I can't, it's I can't a massive barrier. No, yeah. I can't. I can't sympathise with him when he's in a mood. I can't be like, oh, poor Tane is going. Not poor Tane, poor Marley. Sorry, he's going through something, and I feel for him, and it's awful. I just go, oh God, quit your whinging and just to have a bloody conversation with them. Stop being such a child. <laughs> like, yeah. just tell them that you're annoyed, but not in a horrible way. Just say to them, look, like to Kirby, could you just tell me when you're going on a break? Cause that'd be really helpful because you know I just need to get make sure that you know some someone someone's already here, always here on the board shop. We you know one of us on a break and the other ones at the board shop or wherever. I don't know what the excuse would be, but just have that dialogue and set some like like Mr. Stewart was saying, set some some boundaries and some expectations of what he wants her to do. Because it was literally day one, read some paperwork, and she was like, I can read this at home. And at that point, I just said to him, like to to Kirby, I just said to her, like, yeah, you can read it at home. But, mm-hmm. you know, I just need you to, to make sure that you do read it because it is really important. He just got all snippy with her. And again, when yeah. Marley gets snippy, I just think, oh, shut up, Marley. I'm not, I don't have yeah. any sympathy for him. Yeah, 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 I agree. I agree. Um, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm back there with you for now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I wait <laughs> your opinion next week. <laughs> I can't go all in with him because it's no. just... Um, yeah. Uh, it, it, that that's the barrier, isn't it? Just that being a little, little bitch sometimes, and it's yeah. like, stop, stop being a little yeah. bitch and just have a yeah. conversation with them. If you're not, if you're getting annoyed, it's so teenagery. I can't yeah. stand it. And Kirby's doing you a huge favor. Cut the girl some slack. Yeah, I know she's an employee. I get yeah. it. And and you know, picking up clients and stuff. Yeah, let her know. Right, let her know that that looks yeah. bad. It, and he had a valid point about the, you know, that could be a negative review. That yeah. can kill my business. I completely, completely get that. Yeah. Um, but did it need to get to this? You know what I mean? Just no, like the he girl. could have said that from the beginning, couldn't he? he could have said, oh, mm-hmm. I've, just, I've just heard you tell Rose that you've got a phone number off someone. That's great. And I'm glad the surfaces are going well. And I'm glad that the, the clients are liking you. That's really good. But actually, do you mind if you don't date them while you're working for us? Because, you know, it could have repercussions. Like, have a conversation. She's an adult, you know, and she's not thick. She just yeah, gets she just gets carried away with herself. And you just need to yeah. have that conversation with her. She's not a bloody mind reader, Marley. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> she's not a bloody mind reader, Marley. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Now, the film crew, let's talk about those, because they're mm. uh, for weeks now. We can't get a parking space. We can't get a coffee. Like, they're running amok of the bay, aren't they? 
um, mm. cause and an absolute ruckus. Although Mr. Stewart's a little on board now, he's been uh, observing <laughs> from the crack of dawn. Um, and Leah, bless her or bless her not, she's rushed off her feet, and John has handed Justin the marriage certificate that's come through. And Justin's trying to make it all this lovely surprise, this romantic gesture this week. Um, but Leah is being Leah and jumps right down his throat about how busy she is and doesn't have time for him. And go away, you like a fly, you know, like annoyance. Mm. And poor Justin spends a whole episode this week being sort of dismissed and flicked away from Leah because she's so busy and so stressed, even though... Um, it, from my perspective, it looks like Marilyn's doing most of the slack. She's done all the rotors. She's done all the ordering. She's there day in, day out. She's working on her days off. I mean, Leah, come on. Do you know what mm. I mean? You know, where have you been for that? Let's talk about the last six months and how many shifts you've done in comparison to Marilyn. And Marilyn's taking it in a stride, girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so were you team Justin on this one then? I was team Justin. He was trying to. He was trying to just be a newlywed. Mm. You know, she she was acting like they'd been married twenty years, and she's like, "Fuck's sake, warm me tea up when I get in." You know, <laughs> like and I, I know she had no clue. Like she didn't know about it. So I'll give her that. Um, but even Maz notices that Leah, Leah's Leah's a behaviour, Leah's approach, Leah's response. Call it whatever you want. Even Maz is like, Leah, you're in the honeymoon period. Let's remind you of that. You know, like trying to send her home from work. Um, you know, Justin's trying to do a nice thing. Obviously, Ju- Justin said to John, don't tell her I want to do this amazing gesture. But Justin struggled to even get a hold of Leah all day. Mm-hmm. So later on that day, assuming that, he, you know, a husband and wife have had a conversation Oh my God! How dare you assume that? Um, just um, sorry, John has gone to the diner and then put his foot in it by saying, "Oh, about the about the certificate," and then made Leah rush home because she feels guilty. Mm. That's not romantic. That's not that's not being a supportive partner, running home because you feel bad for being a bitch. I don't think she She's was really a bitch, wound so... up. No, just... I'm, I'm oh, team yeah. Leah. Oh, I'm gone. We're roll my sleeves up. Tell me. <laughs> I'm Team Leah. I'm absolutely furious with Justin. The way he's behaved this week, I think he's been shocking. What? I know. I'm sorry. I just think I, I would have smacked him if it was me. From seeing it from my perspective, I'm kind of trying to put myself in Leah's shoes. Right? She's having a really, really busy week, and then she's got him pecking her all the time, going, "I want you to come home. I want you to come home." And I'm not being funny, but marriage certificate, right? They've been, they have been married. They're newly married, and they are newlyweds, etc. But they've been together for a long fucking time. Like this is not a new relationship, and let's be honest, they're not 18 year old newlyweds. So this marriage certificate <laughs> turning up, he doesn't need to give it her that day. He doesn't need to spring it on her on the busiest d- day she's had in in absolutely months at work. He doesn't need to make it that day. If he was being um, less selfish and less self-centered, what he could have done was actually help her. So she's she's getting stressed because she's got all this stuff to do. He's adding to her stress by saying, "I need you to come home," and she's like, "I'm I'm not going to sleep tonight. I've got to get up and cook, you know, cook my sake at six a.m. or whatever." <laughs> So I was just yeah. like, he's not helping. If a, a good partner would have said, what can I do to help you? You know, can I chop up some onions or can I, you know, do the rotors or can I, you know, what can I do to actually alleviate some of the stress here? And then maybe if I help you, you don't have to work till midnight. You could come home at a regular time and then we could have a nice romantic meal and I could present you with the marriage certificate. Or he could say, do you know what? You look really stressed and I'll wait till the weekend because this this marriage certificate isn't going anywhere. And if I give it to you in two days time, it doesn't really matter. So I just don't get why. I mean, he was like a horny little dog that just wanted to get his end away in a bottle of wine in her quickly. And it really annoyed me. (laughs) 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 Sorry. Okay, (laughs) end of my run. (laughs) I'm sorry, I'm really shocked. (laughs) (laughs) Which bit are you shocked by? He wants mm. to do it. I, I'm looking at <laughs> See, this is why it's good that we've, you know, sometimes we don't see eye to eye because <laughs> I was thinking, 
the poor <laughs> guy is thinking, she's rushed off her feet, I want to do something nice. Yeah, I, do you know what? I take your point about him either and not helping to chop onions. Actually, I take your point with that because he clearly isn't busy enough at the diner. He's wandering <laughs> around the bay with his marriage certificate all day, waving exactly. it about. Exactly, just wanting to get his leg over. Get off it, yeah, Justin. I do take that. Do you, I don't think the leg over was his plan. Oh, it I was think you, dirty, horny No, girl. I think she... No, 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 no. I think she came home <laughs> out of jail, saw all the... I mean, honestly, I mean, I couldn't even tell you what hole my marriage certificate is shoved in. <laughs> you know, he's framed it. He's, you know, champagne on ice. Oh, and, um, did, it, did it have to be on the busiest day of the year for the diner? No, it didn't. It could have waited. I'm sorry, she's not cared about how busy it is when she's having a minute. <laughs> oh, I better not say that. <laughs> <laughs> she was fine to dump uh, Marilyn. Marilyn's the star of this busy period. I'm sorry. Yeah, she I'm is. I'm sorry. Can't I'm take not, that I'm away. Not, Can't take that I'm away not from saying, us. Yeah, I'm not saying Leah's not there, not showing up, because she, cause at least she is an Irene. But no, it's not what excuse Irene's got. She's got, she went, she went, did you know, Irene went to the city for a cancer checkup a fortnight ago. <laughs> where yeah, where the hell is she? Is she? <laughs> yeah, have they just took her in? I'm really worried about her, actually. Have they found something and just gone, you must be admitted to hospital know. immediately? I don't know. Because where I is she? They keep Friends of mine have had mammograms on their lunch hour. Where the fuck's Irene? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whether I'd miss anything because I was like, did I miss her saying she's gone to see Finlay or something? Because where is she? She said she had to go to the city for an annual checkup. She did. Do you want me? Do you want me to postpone it? And which I assumed was cancer related because I yeah. was like, everybody make her. I've just wounded myself. Oh. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> Nothing. The joys of being a gentleman. I'm getting oh. excited. Oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> shot on ask. <laughs> I'm getting to it. I'm getting too excited. Oh, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> the she went to the city. Now she did say, you know, we're all busy. Oh, I won't go. I won't go. Where, where, where has she gone? I don't know. I don't know where she's gone. Where, can anyone tell us where is Irene? Did we miss something? <laughs> when? Where is she? <laughs> I'm really worried. She went for a mammogram I saw a fortnight ago and not seen since. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Genuinely worried. I'm going to start making a poster if she doesn't turn up next week. Honestly, that is so funny. You and I have just fallen completely opposite. It doesn't happen often. So that's quite <laughs> funny. Quite funny. Oh, dear. Right, let's get to some nitty gritty, shall we? Rue. Well, no. mm. Rue suddenly is worried about Tane. Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> Have I missed something? Oh, I don't know. I think she's just, maybe Sonia and the baby are busy and she suddenly realised that there's other things going on outside of that bubble. I don't know. I don't know where this came from. Not a clue. I, it's not, I'm glad it's not just me. Like, last time, when it all came out, what happened, Brew was absolutely livid with Tane. I can't speak yeah. to him. I can't Should believe he's done him. this. Yeah. Now she's concerned about his court case rapidly approaching. So yeah. Rue is confusing me at the moment. I don't know what Rue's up to. She just hopped on the to... bandwagon. This is the latest bandwagon and she's hopped on it. Mr Stewart, Stewart feels sorry for Tane and she's just gone, oh yeah, me too. Oh, you know what she's mm -hmm. like. And she's out there asking who's in his corner. And mm. it, she learns that nobody is because he, his only friend's been subpoenaed. Yeah, stop it. In the dark. <laughs> In the dark. <laughs> How rude. Oh, dear. <laughs> Home and away oh. only fans video. I oh, know. That health and safety <laughs> certificate needs renewing now. It's a, you. Subpoenaed in the diner. <laughs> um. Get the anti back out. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't I just can't see any of the way since you have misheard that last week. Um, <laughs> she learns, obviously, he doesn't really have anybody. She learns that Harper and Dana have been served, let's call it, to testify yes. against him. <laughs> and, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, suddenly uh, Rue is awash with concern and uh, I, I'm not buying it. I agree with you. She's just going with it. Mm. Um 
I think if the coastal news rag that it is gets all up in this because they're involved in the court case, right? This journal was mm. a big part of this, you know, this mm. runaway journal was a massive part of this court case um, and what went down. I, I, I she, she's the fair weather. She's a fair weatherer, isn't she? Yeah. And um, she'll she's just go with the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and as the court case approaches, we were very, very much treated and reminded about what is so special about this soap compared to others. With mm. Tane down again at his absolute rock bottom. On the beach, in the water, that scene that, you know, with his stick, yeah. the Maori, honest to God, how beautiful. I can't, I've, I've, I've lost count of how many times I've watched this scene. Yeah, it's um, brilliant. It's getting praise all over the internet for this. I mean, it, they did last time. Well, they've done a few of these, haven't they? Not just mm. Tane on his own, but also the, the hacker that they did at Ari's funeral. All of these scenes are getting yeah. so, so much recognition and, it's so interesting to see it, isn't it? Because like you say, it's not something that we see over here. Obviously, we don't have that that culture here. But to see that on Home and Away and know how important it is for that to be seen on a show like Home and Away and everybody yeah. appre- appreciating it, even in the UK, you know, it's it's really nice to see that. It is. It is. It's invaluable, actually. Yeah. Um, you and I have spoken so much over the years since the uh, introduction of the Paratas Mm. about the education we've had um which tells you the importance it is to show stuff like this and here we are again i don't know there's absolutely no dialogue but it tells me so much about tane and where he is yeah you know what i mean it's so moving i am a sucker for it i really really am it gets me in the feels it really does Mm. he's about to face one of the biggest tests of his life. He's facing, as we learn, 15 years in prison. Yeah. And we've spoken a lot about men's mental health on this on this podcast. We have spoken a lot about, in particular, Tani's mental health and the lack of acknowledgement, actually. Mm. Um, and this was a really poignant moment. He he does he turns to his culture and his heritage for grounding when he's at his lowest ebb every time this is the only time we see you know this is a really important important moment for him yeah um and it's something that's been talked about on social media so a lot of people have been saying that you know this this has actually turned them to thinking that they do feel sorry for him now because you know i've been reading out comments for weeks and weeks and weeks haven't i about tane and how stupid he is and no one can believe he's kid- kidnapped a baby and everyone kind of lost sympathy with him and he, he sort yeah. of the more he went into himself and pushed people away the more the audience got pushed away from him as well and the less sympathetic they were getting with him but this week it started to turn a little bit so i'll read some comments later on in york say on the bay oh. but th- this scene in particular people were starting to feel for him because they were saying like it's really sad to see him doing this on his own and 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 there's so many of the scenes this week, he's walking on his own. He's walking down the beach on his own. He's doing this, you know, his his tire heart on his own, and it's making us really realise that he's got no Ari anymore. He's got no Nika anymore. He is alone. Yeah. And his whole, you know, philosophy and his whole culture is is the Farnu, and he's on his he's completely on his own. He hasn't got any Farnu around mm. him. And I think that's that's very poignant for a character that's apparently so, you know, family orientated. And, you know, all of this is because he wanted a family of his own. It's, yeah. And then to see him on his own, literally on, on the beach and not have anybody in his corner. It's it's quite harrowing, really, when you think about that, isn't it? It is. So, yeah, absolutely. And actually, as you're saying that to me, I'm thinking maybe that's why Rue's turned, a t- t- the ties turned for Rue. Possibly, yeah. I mean, I don't know whether she's seeing what we're seeing as an audience necessarily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She, I mean, she says I mean, she she asks, doesn't she? Well, who's Tane got? She asks to go to the court, and he dismisses her, doesn't he? Mm. And she's like, "Who's who's he got? Who's he got at mm. court?" Like Harper and Dana are against him now, not by yeah. any choice. Like, who has no. he got? And she agree. She asks him to go to court, and he says, "Don't worry about it." Mm. Um, it is. It it is sad. Um, mm. 
it's interesting because the audience really turned against it. I mean, we call him Teflon yeah. Tane. And yeah. the audience lately have really, really struggled to yeah to, to be on his side. That's very, very interesting. Um, and now he's showing that he's human again because he's not been acting mm-hmm. like himself. And I think now he is starting to act like Tane again. This is the Tane that we recognise. But it's it's different because he's on his own this time. He's on his own trying to cope. He's on his own trying to, like, you know, do, do the things that he does in times mm. when he's going through something, mm. you know, awful. And normally he would have Nico and Ari or whoever with him to go through that mm. with him. Mm. And it's really yeah. obvious now that he's got no one. And it's really sad. Yeah, yeah. I feel a bit sombre talking about it, actually. Oh, um, sorry. We'll change no, the mood sorry. In a It's the wine as well. <laughs> oh. Um... Dane is just as nervous, actually. Mm. The people's princess, Dana <laughs> Matheson. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, you don't know Prin- that hill, are you? This is Princess Day, not Princess Di. Oh, um, God. Mm, um, she's just as nervous. Um, she's worried about what she's going to say. She doesn't want to do it wrong. She, you know. Mm she's carrying a bit she's very relatable dana you know i am president of the dana fan club she's very (laughs) relatable and i think her worries about she's telling us what a witness who's been subpoenaed would would be thinking right she's saying oh my god what if i say the wrong thing i'm really nervous can i get out of it what if i'm like i say my pet died or whatever do you know what i mean like Mm. she's very very earthy and relatable dana in her dialogue yeah. Um, I loved Dana for that. Um, but the lawyer who's been trying to track da- Tane down while he's on the beach, you know, grounding himself or what have you, um, having this moment to himself to clear his mind. Um, and he's getting a bit, uh, the lawyer, you remember, has a bit of an issue with Tane about not turning up to his meeting, you know, there's a bit of a thing, isn't there? And mm. it seems to bubble up again. Um, when he tracks him down and he says, you need to get your head in the game. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, are you going to turn up to the court? You know, I, I'm, I'm looking at this thinking, Marshall, the lawyer doesn't trust. He's still got an element of distrust with Tane. Like, are you even going to turn up? You know, I like, thought that was foreshadowing. When I when when he said that and Tani said, yeah, of course, I'm going to be there. I thought, oh, that means he won't be. That will mean something happens. And I didn't know what was going to happen. But I mm. knew from that conversation, I was like, right, that means he's not going to show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we know Is he going to run away? Or is he going to, well, yeah. We yeah. know now what's happened. But at the time, yeah, you, you're right. That that what, that all linked and foreshadowed that he's mm. probably not going to be there. Soap trope. There was a lot um, of ominous, like, lines this week that were like, ooh, you know, conversations about the future. Like, we've got loads of time. We've got all the time in the world. And I was like, ah. <laughs> no you ain't <laughs> no th- i got a bad feeling <laughs> yeah there was lots um, of that this week yeah there was you're right baby's mother's testifying poppy's mum um which is great we we mm. knew that anyway um and the lawyer's you know he's being quite grumpy and stern with tanya and i think i think actually as a good lawyer should be you know mm. get your head yeah. in the game Make sure you're there. You need you, you're going to do this, and t- all Tane's sort of thinking is, you know, what? How how long how long am I going down for? He's given up. He's not even mm. fighting mm. this, is he? He's like, how long am I going down for? How many years am I looking at? Um, and Marshall sort of tries to say to him, there are some good things. We've got a strong defense. Don't worry. And I'm like, really. Um, it seems pretty bang to rights to me. Yeah. Um, Marshall's saying things like, oh, you know, you handed yourself in, et cetera, et cetera. But well, dodges the question, doesn't he? Uh, mm. It's a gorgeous scene, actually, for Tane. Dodges the question about how long he's going down for. He does learn he could get 15 years. Um, and it seems it seems to... It, I mean, it, there's no dialogue, but on Tane's face, it's like, yeah thought so it's that yeah. that that's just sort of confirmed a few things for me and we next see him in the in the gym drawing up paperwork to sign it over to felicity you're like what mm-hmm. the hell this guy is not fighting these charges is he he's no. he's t- he's going to take his punishment and i'm like mm. 
is it going in there now? Like, I, you were ringing in my mind thinking, we haven't heard that Tane's not associated with the show anymore. Like, mm. we'd, have, we'd have heard. So I'm expecting, you know, how, would, how do we write out of this? And we, we're still not, everything that we've seen that's aired thus far in the UK, I'm like, he's going down for it. He's signing the gym away. We're, le- we're now losing his ties to the Bay. You know, this yeah. is a character exit in motion now. Yeah. You're like. Yeah. I don't know how we get. I don't know how we get back from jail because mm. what kidnapper doesn't go to jail? I don't. You know what I mean? I just. <laughs> I don't see how we can get around jail, but maybe we're going to have to just go with whatever happens because, like you say, I don't. I don't think he's left the show that I've heard of. I think we'd hear yeah. about that. So I do like that we're guessing though. Yeah, like a part of me is like, well, if he's not leaving, how on earth does this even happen? Mm. Yeah, you don't know? know. Are we going to get the prison set back? Are we, you know, I don't know. Not it's clear. weird, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, it's a very, it's a very tricky situation, and I'm, and I'm really, really invested in how we write out of this. Mm. I'm really invested in that. I, re- I really am. Um, I'm worried about it, I'll be honest. I'm worried that it's going to be, oh, well, don't worry about it. You've, you're you genuinely a good person. You made a mistake. Never mind. I'm worried it's going to be that. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, really? Because <laughs> I know that. Mm. we love Tane. Like, speaking, if we put the law to one side, we love Tane. Mm. We know he's not mm. a bad person. We know he did it for the, for the right reasons, in inverted commas. He's, mm. He wasn't doing it to harm the baby. He thought it was the best thing for the baby to protect the baby, etc. I get that. But the law doesn't care about any of that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <sighs> You're a kidnapper. That's not something you're allowed to do. You're not allowed to just go, oh, well, I had an excuse. Sorry. I, I mm. gave it back. You can't really do that. Mm. So I don't know. I've got a feeling we're going to we're gonna end up with something that I'm going to be like, oh, God, as if, you know, and I'm going to roll yeah. my eyes. I'm yeah. worried. I'll be honest. Yeah, app- apprehensive. Yeah. I, do you think that's the only way you see us getting out of this? Like some really daft excuse. Unless we, unless we have like I don't know, prisoner cell block Tarnay. I just don't really see. <laughs> I don't really see how we can. If I do don't you, know. What about like, uh, you know, given your character witnesses, given that the mother's fine with it, like <laughs> I sentence you to 12 months, you'll probably only serve two and be back on air in, yeah. in October. Yeah, you know? or maybe like a suspended sentence. Like he gets 15 years, but if he makes one mistake, he goes to prison immediately. You know, I don't know. Yeah. But even that mm. seems really far-fetched to me. I'm like, mm. who, who mm. doesn't go to jail for kidnap? I mean, like, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> hello? Unbelievable. I mean, I'm down for prisoner cell block Tane spin off. <laughs> like, I am literally down for that. If that's like a spin off, yeah. sign me up. Let's do a pod about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch it. I'd watch it. Oh, dear. Um, elsewhere in the Bay, Rose is saying, everyone, need, you need to get your head around this. Mm. Um, especially to Dana and Harper like it's most likely he's going to get the sentence the DPP want to go hard and best which is normally a good thing but not in this scenario <laughs> um, and Rue is like you know you need to really prepare for the worst um, and Alf is like more worried about the isolation mm. um, Alf is suddenly worried about Tane as well as Rue He's worried about him. He's isolated himself. Things you've mentioned, you know, mm. he's on yeah. his own a lot. Um, signing the gym over and court day arrives, doesn't mm. it? Yeah. Um, and it seems like he doesn't make it there. Um, now that's because of the next storyline intertwined. These, these block, this is why my notes are all over the place because the block stuff's less prominent these days. Mm. Filming is underway um, with, you know, this film's going on on the beach, this rom-com of Stevie's um, all of our tomorrows, blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> it's no sex in the city, is it? Let's face it. <laughs> and um, and 
Um, Remy tries to speak to Stevie. She doesn't want a bar of it, right? This whole ending of their thing last week, the whole Remy and Bree thing blew up and the bike thing and the walk of shame, you'll remember. Um, I don't want to be your boyfriend, but it looked like actually Stevie did. Um, and Remy's tried to go back there earlier in the week this week, and Stevie's not having a bar of it. She's like, go away, get him off my set. Mm. Um, keep him away. Um, I don't want him in my life. And she's like, you think I have baggage? You can look in the mirror. There was lines <laughs> like that, wasn't there? And I was yeah. like, oh, this is yeah. what you want to say to you. This movie stuff is corny. <laughs> um, however, then... There's this huge midweek U-turn reconciliation, jump back into bed after a conversation thing. And I was a bit perplexed about how we got to that. I was a bit like, okay, what, you know, give him a chance, was, go around. It was Eden, wasn't it? It was that conversation. Yeah. But yeah. Come on. For me, it was a bit of surface level, that. I, it was, um, but I think I think she just again. I think Stevie's so used to everyone agreeing with her because she's this big movie star. And she gets whatever she wants, and I think they she's used to people going, yeah, 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 totally agree, agree. And uh, Eden was like, oh yeah, like you're so into him, and it's so obvious. And she was like, oh, maybe I am. And I think it did take her by surprise. It was like you say, it was a quick turnaround, but we needed to get this. We needed that scene, didn't we, to get to the. Friday to be so crushed by what happened we needed to yeah. hear, hear them talking about mm. reconciliation about them being boyfriend and girlfriend about them planning the futures together and having conversations and we don't have to have that conversation right now we've got the rest of our lives to have that conversation you know what I mean it was we had to get to that quickly I think do you know what I think might have helped me mm. is if all the stuff you know about like Remy going down to Yabby Creek with Theo and getting absolutely off his face <laughs> um you know that whole you know oh my god like fuck my life let's mm. get mortal because why like, my life's over thing insisting that you're fine but you're hung over to hell because you're hurting she did that though didn't she because she she didn't turn up last week for the for the set and you know when cash uh threatened her to put her in the shower and all that stuff she had her kind of blowout moment then didn't she yeah, yeah, but you know how we saw Remy do it this week with Theo? Yeah. I think if that was last week, it like, you know, like timeline wise, if that was okay. a bit, there was a bit of distance between that and them like, yeah. we need to, you know, we've got all our lives to be together, let's jump in the bed. I think if there was a bit of distance, I might have bought into it more. I struggled mm. with them, oh, right, here we go again, you know, will they, won't they, you mm. know? I think if there was a bit of distance, I might have got on board with it a bit more. Because that was like Monday's ep. Remy and Theo, let's get mortal. Get over your problems. Although that was probably more about Bree thinking about it. Yeah. See, I'm confused with Remy. Who Who is he into? You know, what's his choice? I think he's he's genuinely gutted about both, isn't he? He's gutted that the Bree thing didn't work out because that's the, mm. that's the first long-term significant relationship he's ever had it's the first time he's ever said i love you to someone you know and mm. it's not been that long since they broke up and they broke up over i'm saying i'm putting my foot down they broke up over his bike and <laughs> the next minute he turns around and she's on the back of someone else's bike i think that uh -huh. hurt, i think that would hurt anybody if that uh -huh. happened to them i think that's harsh uh -huh. so i think that's that's sort of thrown him I don't, I, yeah, I don't think he thinks, oh, me and Brie, you know, we should still be together. I think he realizes that that has played its played its course. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think he was genuinely crushed that she did jump on someone else's bike. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, 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 you know, as um, I mean, it's so it feels like a euphemism, doesn't it? It feels like the bike is a euphemism for something else. You know, he, she's mm -hmm. jumped back on back on the horse so quickly, but. I don't know. I don't think they're. Yeah. I think he, I don't think he's cut up about losing Brie. I think he's cut up about the fact that that was the first significant relationship that he's ever had. It was significant for him. We kept being told he's a one night stand kind of guy. He doesn't fall in love. He doesn't take people back to meet his parents. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. yeah. She met his parents. He said the L word. You know, he had loads of firsts with her that he hasn't had with anybody else. 
Um, and I, okay. Yeah, I think that's okay. where we're coming from. I'll allow it. You've convinced <laughs> me. I will allow. <laughs> <laughs> I can um, see it. I can see. Yeah. You, know, you know your first yeah. love, and that, when that ends, mm. it is like it is crushing, isn't it? And then to see them moving on with someone else, it is a bit like that's the first time he's ever had that. He's ever seen someone move on, and then had to deal with it. That's true, and it got to the ripe old age of twenty-eight before it happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, twenty-eight. Mm. Mm. Um, so it all seems smooth sailing from that point. He and he and Stevie are up a notch. They're in bed, saying sweet nothings, giggling about stuff, you know, and all very, very sort of. This is too happy to be true. You know, yeah. too good yeah. to be true. Um, and, um, yeah, f- she has to go to set one day. She doesn't want to be late. Um, and then Cash gets this call out of the blue from the security company. And you're like, what's all this about? Mm. And it turn- it, it sounds like Lunger from the other week, which we knew, we mm. knew that that was un unsolved like we were me and you were actually convinced he wasn't the stalker like mm, yeah he's not the guy like what this isn't over like that was too easy mm. mr lungeman from the other week is out mistrial or something was it was it explained as yeah someone in the circle i think one of the actors on the sh- on the movie uh, set said I've not just actor, yeah. The the yeah the mm. he'd googled and he'd gone oh miss it's a mistrial and that's why he's out it's all over the news and I was thinking oh really because I uh, this is another thing I'm going to have to Jenny I think because if it's a <laughs> mistrial and he's been let out of prison and the first time we hear about it is the security company phoning cash I mean it should have been the police giving Stevie the heads up you know it should have been. It shouldn't have been in the newspaper before Stevie found out that this was happening. This is again mm-hmm. something that we have to Jenny. But obviously, if it didn't, if she had been pre-warned, we wouldn't get to where we were with the storyline. So yeah, we have to go with it, don't we? Yeah, to get to the plot point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, and we just hear Cash like, oh my god, there must mm. be some sort of threat or intel that there's yeah. some revenge expected. Oh, yeah. Because Tane seems, from this phone call, Tane seems to know that Stevie is in immediate danger. My fork, my my dinner has fallen off my fork at this point. <laughs> um, yeah. And all we see is Cash race out of Seoul, race down to the beach like, Stevie. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, trying to get to it. Like, he knows from that phone call. I mean, I hope we get to hear the contents of that phone call, to be honest, because I'm like, Mm. what did they say to you? Like, how did they know what he was... Turns out... Well, do you you remember when when they got arrested? And, you know, know, we we found out that actually the, the scene that we got in the UK had been edited differently to how it was supposed to be played out when it was, you know, originally... And we were supposed to see him with a weapon, weren't we? And it was it was cut out of the show. Long long explanation. I won't go into it. Um, uh. So off the back of that, we were like saying, well, you know, we only saw him lunge at her. We didn't see him do anything. Didn't touch her. We were really confused. Do you remember when we when he uh. first got arrested yeah, by yeah. Cash? We were like, what did yeah. he actually do? What? The? And then they were going like, you're going to go to prison for the rest of your life. And we were like, what for? For lunging at her with like nothing? <laughs> like it made no sense. But then there was that scene. After he was arrested, I think the week after when Stevie was saying, like, oh, I don't, I still don't feel safe. And I think Cash was saying, yeah, well, they searched his apartment. He'd had all these guns, all these weapons, all this awful stuff on his laptop. You know, he he's banged to rights. He's not coming out. And I thought maybe that's what triggered, triggered Cash, you know, knowing this guy had got an arsenal of weapons at home and now he's out of prison. Yeah. On a mistrial, yeah. you know, uh, you two and two together, and um, Cash is pretty smart, isn't he? And this is this was his job for years as a policeman. I think that's where he went. You know, like, this guy is known for having guns and being an unhinged weirdo. Of course, he's on the way to the bay. I mean, the, the, we've just had Sunrise in the bay telling everybody where Stevie is and the fact that she's shooting that movie there. Oh, that's, you know, that's true. That's yeah, breakfast I didn't TV. Think of that. 
Yeah, I didn't think of that. That's going to be all over the country, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I just felt like, oh, there must be some inform- a lot of information on this phone call for him to think, oh, he's right there now. I think we Sniping. just have to put. I think we have to put it all together and just think this guy's out on. Yeah, you're right. Not, not yeah. even out on bail. He's just out. He's he's off with the charges. He's a he's a wrong one. He's unhinged. He's got all these weapons. We've just plastered Stevie all over the TV, telling the whole world where she is and where she's filming her movie. Where's he going to come? The first place he's going to come from prison is here. And on the way home, mm. he's going to pick up a gun because that's what he does. Yeah, that's you're that's right. what I yeah. that's what I've sort of took from it. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, we see Cash then run down to the beach to try and stop, you know, try and interrupt filming. Um, and um, he's too late, isn't he? It turns oh, out he's already there, Lunger, mm. and he's got a sniper. <laughs> Where was he? Where was he? He was on the grassy knoll. He was was miles away. Yeah. Mm, mm. And he 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 shoots her. Shoots, shoots Stevie, and then absolute chaos ensues. Then the whole um, production of the movie leg it into the surf club. Cash is left with Stevie collapsed in his arms, shouting ring triple O or whatever he said. Um, Man Bun is beside himself. He's like, oh, my God, ring in the ambulance. And then the whole show just descends into chaos, doesn't it? Mm. And you and I probably haven't breathed for two days watching it. (laughs) Um, Mr. Stewart is on the new he's on the um phone to the you know to the emergency services himself everybody seems to go into some big lockdown mm. uh, in the surf club um the news gets around the bay everybody lock your doors this guy you know steve he's been shot that he's not been caught he's out there somewhere and it may happen to any of you again and nobody mm-hmm. knows what's going to happen and this is absolutely insane it akins to this is the kind of thing i was watching it thinking this is what people in america sort of yeah. go through yeah like when there's these mass shootings and things like this yeah. is this is beyond, I'm sitting here in in the safety and comfort of my own lounge, mm. absolutely petrified, watching this, and like I am nowhere near having to experience any of this stuff. Thank God. Um, yeah. The way the camera work, the incidental music, this was done so well. It was. Like, yeah. Yeah. The the panic, the horror, really came through. Mm, the screaming, the noises in the background, mm. all the screaming. Like mm. a lot of the sound effects this week have actually given me chills. There was a lot of scenes where the you know the background music gave me chills, or like the the, the sound effects of when when something happened. I was like, oh, it 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 is kind of like a horror film. It does you know that music where you know something bad's going to happen and you feel it, don't you? And you go, oh god, yeah. In the pit yeah. of your stomach, you just know something's going to happen. And then when it does, it all goes into a crescendo, and you're like on edge, and like, oh my god, yeah, like it's just been really well done, hasn't it? This the whole yeah. panic, panic scene on the beach. I mean, that is what would, what people what would happen. People would either freeze and go into panic mode, which is which what a few of them did. They kind of froze and just were like, oh god, what do we do? And then other ones will just go into flight mode, and everyone was just sort of running in every direction because we don't know where the bullet came from. So they're just mm. running all over the place like lemmings, aren't they? And then Mr. Stewart's mm. like, well, what the hell's going on? And then just the chaos mm. of it was, ew, mm. God, it, they, did, they did this really well. I'll be honest, it I was really, so. yeah, really good. I think so as well. And there are all the arguments in the surf club, that actor that we are, yeah. that actor, you know, yeah. Yeah. He, 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 he's panicking, isn't he? And he's, yeah. he, he's, his personality is, is such that he's winding everyone up. But there's absolutely amazing scene. He's in shock, isn't he? Let's yeah, be yeah, yeah. But this is his amazing scene with Mr. Stewart, who's like, I don't really care who you call. Just <laughs> do it over there. <laughs> Call the King of England for all I mm. care. <laughs> do it quietly. Mm. Yeah. Who is the King of Australia? <laughs> don't stop. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think that was, that was great, wasn't it? Because, it, you know, you don't know how you're going, you don't know how you're going to act when you're in that kind of situation. And thank God, mm. hopefully, none of us will be in that situation. Mm. But you just mm. don't know how you're going to act. And you might be the one sitting in the corner crying, or you might be the one that's in shock and saying stuff that you don't, you know, you don't really mean. Or, yeah. You know, aggravating others yeah yeah because yeah. you're scared yeah. and he, that yeah. guy was he yes yes he was being a dickhead but he was obviously scared and yeah. that's just in that moment that's how it was coming out and it was just annoying and it was all very selfish and oh i can't believe she's done this to us and i just want to get out of here he's panicking he's not really thinking mm. logically because if he was you, mm. he wouldn't want to leave the surf club you'd be you'd be locking mm. the buttons down you know be stay in here and lock all the doors and windows and don't even go Absolutely. I mean Miss, Mr Stewart was saying you can either stay in the circle or you can go upstairs to salt and I was thinking I wouldn't go upstairs to salt because they've got this huge balcony with windows uh-huh. and if there's a sniper out there somewhere I'm not being funny <laughs> but I'd rather be in the surf club where it's like you know no windows and a bit dingy this might be the only time you get me in the gym <laughs> That's true. Get myself in a locker <laughs> have you got any lockers free Tony I just climb into Oh dear. Who had a, a really poignant emotive scene with Al Stewart and Nelson Manbun oh, yeah. on their on their bingo card cuz I oh, didn't. Yeah. That was mm. great. Mm. Really good. Yeah. Mm. Um yeah, it's it's delivered us some really out of the box stuff this. Mm. Um elsewhere like flicks sort of locking herself in the house and she's What's interesting here? This tells me Flick and Tane are not done, right? Mm, yes. Because regardless of everything, there's so much water under that bridge, and you know we don't need to go over it. We all know, right? Um, but Flick, the, her first instinct is to phone Tane. It's the day of his trial, <laughs> right? No, he's gone. Oh, God. He's gone for a walk to clear his head. He's in full trial get up. Oh, like, God. which is probably the same suit as uh, bodyguard Cash. <laughs> um, and he's gone for a walk to clear his head. He's no idea. The whole bait, like, this chair's tipped up at the coffee car. Like, no one's... Uh, did he not think, oh, that where was is eerie. everyone? Yeah. That's so eerie. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, gets a call off Flick, who's like... Oh my God! There's been a shooting. The, the guy is out there. Nobody knows where he is. Where are you? And mm. he clocks at that moment. He clocks the shooter stood mm. there with his gun. Um, chases him, ends up actually knocked out by him. Mm. Um, which actually is a very very lucky escape, to be honest. So that links in with how we know Tane is not going to be in court which we don't know what repercussions that's going to have mm. or whether that might go and escape. Who knows? Um, <laughs> what, running after a man with holding a gun? He's not, showing him, he's not showing himself to be the most rational person, is he? Again, No, but the... that might be his Jenny moment. <laughs> true. Yeah, true. Mm. Of the whole character witness, the whole, ca- you know, what kind of character he is, that could build up yeah. some of that case. Yeah. Um, not that, like you say, not that the law should care about that stuff, but you know, you've told me to Jenny and I'll have to. <laughs> um, so Tane's in the wars and Flick's then putting herself at danger, leaving the house to go and find him. And you're like, oh, who's <laughs> going to be next? You know, although it was funny that because I was worried about other people getting injured, but we mm. know Stevie was the target of this fella. Yes. So that immediately makes it a little bit safer but I'm still worried yeah I think I wouldn't have been worried unless Tane he was on the phone and he, he you know when he clocked that guy mm. it was really obvious that the guy had realized Tane knew who he was and I didn't know whether mm. also because Tane was dressed a bit like bodyguard cash whether he wondered oh yeah like put two and two together make five is he another bodyguard does is he another person that's working for Stevie um, I don't know. We don't know what the shooter thought when he saw Tony, but obviously the look between the two of them was supposed to glean from that that the shooter realised that Tony knew that he was the one that they're looking for. Very good point. Yeah, you're probably right there. I didn't. I, didn't, I hadn't considered that. No, but I don't you're know. right. He probably assumed he was part of her team, didn't he? I'd, yeah, and in that case, I think although Stevie was the intended target, 
actually anybody could anybody related to Stevie could end up being the target, couldn't they? If he's trying to avoid mm. being captured mm. or avoid being, you know, seen or whatever, he he could go after anybody else that's able to identify yeah. him. Or I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Actually, yeah, he's been seen. He's been chased. Get mm. rid of him. He doesn't know. No. He spares his life. Um, yeah. Maybe he only had one bullet. <laughs> one bullet, one chance. With her name etched into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, me, it was it was fabulous either way. Like, you it know. It was. It was such a good mm. good episode, but I, oh god, it was heartbreaking. I was like, I enjoyed mm. it and I also didn't enjoy it at the same time because I've really grown attached to Stevie. And it, this death, mm. I've I actually can't remember the last time someone on Home and Away died and it affected me as much as this one. Because if we've had That's quite a few deaths over the last couple of years, and I think I've laughed about half of them and like not been that you know not been terribly sad about a lot of the deaths that we've had recently, but this one's really made me sad. Oh, that's very interesting. Is it pod dark theme worthy? I I, I think it might be. Yeah. <laughs> interesting. Might be. Yeah. Very interesting. What What do you Ta- think? How do you yeah, think? How do you Stevie- feel? In such a short space of time, Stevie seems to have made an impact. Mm. Um, and I agree. It's a it's it's a massive shame we've got here. I love the story though. I love mm. that it's this larger than life, but this is gonna be massive. This is yeah. a big film star in in the in the storyline, she is a huge celebrity. Yeah, you know. Thinking, and when these things happen, ev- the shock, the ripple, mm. you know, we've known it from real life when such things have happened to celebrities. <laughs> Excuse me, there's an outcry. Yeah. There's a yeah. pouring, there's an outpouring of grief mm. from people who don't know the people. So I think it's going to be very interesting what goes on next because yeah. up at the hospital, we know she's not made it. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Brie has made this promise to Remy that she's gonna she's gonna save her and unfortunately you know the Lord had other plans you know <laughs> she tried five doses of adrenaline Sophie you know uh, this wasn't yeah. happening Levi was trying to help everybody was on hand trying to resuscitate her she was dead um, yeah yeah and that that scene, Cash knew, obviously he's a policeman, he's been there before. Yeah. Um where it, and it and I think it was all it was it was all worse for it being Brie that had to deliver it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Comes out of the curtain. She just declared the death. She she had, you know, this and then she's got to watch her ex-boyfriend who there is complete unfinished business with yeah right yeah um mourn his new lover i was just like oh my god can this get any madder yeah and there'd been so many other scenes that week hadn't there you know there'd been that conversation between brie and stevie where brie just said just make him happy you know all i want is for, for remy to be happy and then um, stevie said oh you know it, that's absolutely fine i can do that and she said, oh, sorry, I've been a bit strange with you, but I'm not in the situation normally where, you know, two exes are such good friends and they're so nice to each other. And, you know, it's mm. nice that you can you've all, you can all get on and I hope we can all get on. And it was all like there was so much, yeah, so much foreshadowing happening this week. It was so sad because it's yeah. like ev- everyone was like, you know, finally moving on and finally having conversations that they hadn't had before and. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then all of this this kind of happens, and that and Brie had her sort of flight fight or uh, flight moment when, you know, she she saw Stevie on the stretches, like she knew the gunshot wound was coming in, and said to Levi, "I've got a gunshot wound victim coming in. Don't know much about it, but they'll be here any second. I'm getting prepped for surgery." And then the minute she saw it, Stevie, she kind of froze, didn't she? And she was like, "Oh my god, like this is this is even more of a bigger deal than just having a normal gunshot." you know victim this is a famous person who also happens to be dating my ex-boyfriend like does it get bigger than that i don't think it does, <laughs> I don't think it does. that's insane mm. like to put her under that pressure is insane and then for her yeah. to then you know for him to say to her please tell me that you're going to save her life yeah sure 
and then having to say actually no I didn't like I don't know how is this going to affect Brie and Remy's relationship you know going forwards I think that's going to be all all the little splinter stories that are going to come from this Mm. death now are going to be really interesting because it's going to be Brie versus Remy it's going to be Remy versus Cash because Remy finds out that Cash wasn't next to Stevie when he got the phone call yeah yeah so what's going to happen there? And obviously everyone that's related to them and like sort of interwoven with them, like Flick and Eden, are all going to get caught in the middle. So oh, I think it's going to be quite difficult for the next yeah. few weeks. Um, friend of the pod, JK, from the Neighbourhood mm. Rewatch, who's been watching, he converted. said, Converted. 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 Can we do- converted officially. Fan. Yes. Hashtag converted. He was tweeting along tonight. Fan- fabulous. Thanks so much. Um, he was saying, wasn't he? This is a death that ha- that is big enough to affect things like. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it will be like you're saying. It'll be very, very interesting to see what yeah. what goes on here. Now you've been commending. We both have, but you've been commending the way they've written things together and knitted things up yeah. for months now. Um, this is a culmination of that, I think. Um, and and I really think that's why up. I care. Yeah, yeah, you're that's right. why I care about this storyline because if you think about the the d- loads of deaths that we've had over the last couple of years, we've had people because. We have criticised the show, let's be honest, we have criticised the show recently, in you know, in the last year or two years, for bringing in people randomly that are uh, brought in for a, you know, a short period of time and then killed off in some, some way. And we've laughed about it and we've been like, oh, here comes another one that's going to get killed off. You know, like mm-hmm. Max's ex-boyfriend, what was his name, the one that got cancer, for his name now? Thingy. Thingy Bob, you know who I mean, don't mm-hmm. you? They brought him mm-hmm. in, Gabe, that was it. Gabe, they brought, yeah, they brought it. Gabe in. We d- we didn't mm. get attached to him, and then he died off screen, and we were like, yeah, whatever. But this mm. isn't the same as that. They brought Stevie in, and he had she hasn't felt like a random match. Like, she's been really integrated with everybody, you know. Mm. Even having like this mm. week, having scenes with Mister Stewart, she's mm. and she's had scenes with like people in the diner, people in Salt. Obviously, getting together with Remy and you know practically living in Eden and Cash's pocket for a little bit as well. She's she's and she's just so infectious in a good way. Yeah, that she's yeah. spread herself across the show. And I think for me, that's why I care about her and I care about her death. Then more than I have done for I don't know the last half a dozen people that have, that have died on the show because they've not been as well integrated into the story and into the bay and into the lives of everyone else that lives there. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, it makes perfect, perfect sense. Um, now, Cash leaves this devastating moment at the hospital, doesn't he? Stevie is mm. pronounced dead. Cash leaves that and goes home mm. for the big Friday night cliffhanger and mm. finds the sniper dude, Lunger, in his house. Mm. And then the show ends cruelly. And leaves us all all weekend. Like <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> but then, have they just done that to us? Why? Why did they do this? Why? Do, I'm hoping. I don't know whether this is this is wishful thinking now. Okay, so we don't know where this guy is. Mm. We don't know where this, this sniper guy is. Mm. But you know, if he is on the loose somewhere and he's still got a vendetta against anybody. It would be somebody that's close to CV, wouldn't it? Like, I don't know. I think, I think Cash's house, I don't think they would necessarily think he was at Cash's house, but I think Cash's house should have been a place that they would check that he wasn't there before they said it was safe to go there. So I think the police should have actually checked Cash's house as a place of interest looking for this mm. guy. There should be a whole that's list true. of places yeah. that yeah, they're yeah. looking for this guy, you know, and I think that should have been so on, on the list. So the YCPD. <laughs> I know, I know. I know. And this is why I'm wishful thinking. My wishful thinking is that he's walked in there knowing that there's a possibility that this guy's in there and he's wearing a wire or something. And, he, you know, the, the police are outside and they're ready to come in and get him. And that's the mm. only thing that's going to keep me going until Monday night at half past six, because <laughs> I, I can't believe that Cash is stuck in the house with that guy and nobody knows he's there. It's just, yeah, no. Scary. Yeah, it is. It is. What a way to leave the week, though. Oh, no. Seriously. 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 What have you done to us? What have you done to us? <laughs> I know. You've got to kill us. You've got to kill us, let alone Stevie. 
Um, right, just before we go, we have a brief time to mention Levi and another one of his ultimatums. Um, oh, God, yeah. If we must. Um, <laughs> you know that um, he's had a bad day of gossip at work and Max telling him, you know, all scandals run their course. Don't worry oh, yeah. about it. Yeah. I've been podding up with it off her uh, indoors at work. <laughs> and um, and uh, he says he's thinking about resigning from the St. Christopher's Prestige Hospital, wherever he comes from. And, um, you know... It'll be better for Imogen. It'll be better for the patients if I'm just out of the way. You know, it, everyone's distracted. And she tries to talk him around from it. She's like, you've worked hard for this. It's not, you know, it's not on you. Um, but he does it anyway. He resigns. Uh, he wants a new life. He tells her. Um, and then he ends up with yet a load more book ton of hassle of Eden about mm. his choices. And she's picking up the pieces because she's getting phone calls still from Imogen this week. Um, and he basically turns around and says to her, look, I chose Mac. Get over it. I you know I've lived without you for 10 years. I'm prepared to do it again. Your yeah. call. Rack off. <laughs> um and i must this was like a man at the end of his tether now like there's no mm. getting through to her um similar to like the whole mac and flick feud i've started to empathize with that position a little bit yeah like have you like what's your thoughts i'm annoyingly on his side for that argument. yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be because wow. I don't want to agree with him, but, but he has got a point, hasn't he? Yeah. But, uh, more so, I think Eden's taken this beyond the line. Yeah. Like, yeah. be upset with him, but ultimately it's his life to fuck up. Yes. You yeah. know? Like, yeah. let him get on with it. I think, and he's right. Like, we've been estranged for so many years. Yeah. Let's just do it again. Like, yeah. yeah, that is a legitimate thing to say, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't like hearing that, did she? She she said that to him. I think she said to him recently, you know, you're dead to me. You're dead to me. Yeah. And I didn't have you in my life all, all these years. And if I didn't again, I guess I'd get over it. And to have it said back to her, I think that's resonated on her now. And she's going, oh, I didn't like that. Actually, I didn't like being told by my brother that he's quite happy for never never to hear from me again. I think that did hurt her. Mm. So I don't know whether, are we going to see a reconciliation? Are these two ever going to get back to where they were a few weeks ago before she found I'm not, out? Yeah, I'm not sure. We know he's staying around, don't we? But yeah. where they've left it, it's like, we're not a family. Mm. Like, you know, this is it for us. Yeah. Um, and I think actually as a viewer, it might be quite refreshing to have family that aren't in each other's pockets, I guess. Yeah. Um, but he does agree to be civil. They both agree on being civil. Yeah. Um, so it'll probably happen. But I think it would be quite interesting to have family in the Bay that aren't necessarily, you know, yeah, not all Lovey happy families. And... Yeah. yeah, yeah. We need some dysfunction sometimes, don't we? Because yeah, a lot, a lo not many families are completely functional. Let's face it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we all want to see a bit of that because we're all fucked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in some way or another, aren't we? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, we've always, uh, we've, everyone's got that bit of their family that's a little bit messed up, a little bit unhinged, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, of course they have. Um, they've got that uncle so, yeah. they don't talk to or they've got that grandma that's you know horrible grandma or whatever you know what I mean <laughs> like yeah they've yeah. all got this so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely right Sai you're saying the bay time are you ready <laughs> yes come on tell me the reaction <laughs> I'm gasping <laughs> <laughs> gasping literally gasping i scared I my partner gasping at the end <laughs> today <laughs> i know i know it's oh, I, feel, I feel exhausted honestly i was exhausted before i watched that episode but i'm even more exhausted after seeing all the, the drama that happened but anyway let's not about us let's talk about what the people think of the show for a minute if we can <laughs> we're terrible at this 
if we can. So I've been digging through social media. I've been trying to mm. find out what people think about the show this week. What's happened in the Bay? What do you guys think? Um, but before that, before I start to read out your thoughts, just a quick reminder that we're on social media. So Coastal News Podcast, at Coastal News Pod, Facebook, Instagram, Threads, YouTube, Twitter, etc., etc. We tweet along with the show when we watch it. We watch it 6.30pm Monday to Friday on Five Star in the UK. So we're doing the first look episodes um get on that hashtag join the discussion let us know your thoughts um and maybe we'll read them out next week you never know mm. you never know so mm. let's jump in then so people were talking about tane obviously talking about tane this week because <gasps> we've been seeing him now, moping yeah. about the day haven't we on his own isolation yeah. i'm interested in this because you gave me an indication that the tide might have turned here yeah, well, I'll be honest, a lot a lot of the comments were about one particular scene, and I think you can probably guess what the comments were and oh. what what scene oh. I was talking about. There was a lot of the yeah. housewife housewife and, and hot comments uh, about a certain scene of him on the beach this week. Yeah. But also, yeah, there were some t- some tweets and some Facebook comments about him being isolated. So um, Jamie was one of the people on Twitter that was saying Tane on his own on the beach is making me quite sad. Um, makes me miss Nico and Ari. And that's what I was saying. A lot of people on Facebook are saying the same thing. Like, it's so obvious now with these scenes this week that he is all on his own. And for a family orientated person, this is really sad to see, isn't it? So, yeah, people, people yeah. have picked up on that. Mm. Um, stick things back in the bay. And um, Barry on Facebook <laughs> says, you know something serious is happening when Tane does this. Yeah. And that's, that's I, true, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I said the same. We only see him mm. connecting. And it, it, it's some sort of outer body experience, isn't it? I don't know mm. enough about this. But the way I'm interpreting this, he's all, we only, we, we see this when he is a, is a, is about done the guy is spent he mm. is at his lowest the last time was Ari's death mm. um and he was trying to gather the energy to to go on and be there for nico if you remember yeah um yeah. this this so so that is all i can sort of go on watching this and i got the same inference he is somewhere he's not in himself he he is he, his culture he you know that's taken him somewhere that grounds him yeah. and he needs to he needs to be there on his own in this moment to refocus himself before this big fight he's got ahead of him yeah um, and yeah. you can't help but be mesmerized and taken in by that you know. Yeah, absolutely. And then that's exactly what Mira says on Facebook. So Mira says, I could watch him all day long. Please don't send him yeah. to jail. Please yeah. don't send him to jail. Spare his life. <laughs> so people are literally crying out for him to not go to prison. And, and you know, I've been saying for weeks that Facebook's turned on Tane and said, you know, this guy's yeah. off his head. You know, he needs to go to prison. And now they're all saying, don't send him to prison. I really like his character. I, I could watch him all day. You know, the tide has turned again. This is We're ridiculous. Fickle, aren't we? He takes Fickle his top bunch. off. <laughs> yeah. He takes his top off and none of us want him to leave. Gets it's his hilarious. wood out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All is yeah. forgiven. All is forgiven. Yes, mm. exactly. And uh, as Mr. David said, Tani going full Maori superhero shirtless on the beach is not gratuitous at all. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> nope. Not at all. Lots of people were praising it, though. Lots of people were praising it, though. And like um, Jamie said, great camera work with the scene there. I mean, it is. The way that they shot this, you know, he's obviously moving all the time and he's turning in different directions. I don't know how many takes they must have taken to get all of that. Yeah, the slow-mo and the... Yeah. yeah. It's obviously a lot of of work to get that scene. And then obviously we're all going, oh, does he look fit? So... (laughs) We are mm. kind of bringing it down a bit, but there's a lot of lot of work that goes into that the filming of that scene in in its own right, I guess. And the post in post, you know, you mm. mentioned on the main part about the sounds that we hear. It's the whole experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, you you, 
I suppose as a podcast for this show, we need to champion that stuff that yes. we all take for granted. And yeah. you cannot overlook. We've been, I'm hoping, and I would pray that people notice this, we have been an, a massive champion of the production elements of the show, not just Absolutely. the writing, but the yeah. post, the edit, everything. Like mm. you and I have, have always made a point of championing that. And this year have noticed specifically a massive upstep in yeah. that stuff. The change mm. of tone that's mm. come from it as well um, is much, much received. And we will continue to highlight that because it's a lot of stuff when you're watching it at home with your tea, sat with your family, you might not necessarily notice and it needs to be highlighted. Yeah, and then when you've watched the same episode three times in a week like we do, <laughs> we notice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and we appreciate yeah. it. And do you know what? Mm. Watching it three times is not a chore when it's this good. You know. That's, do you know what? That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for all the people that put the show together because you do you do make it easy for us to watch it over and over again. I'll be honest. <laughs> it could be mm. that could be a chore, but we um we do enjoy it. In fact, the Stevie episode, I've watched it twice and I'll watch it again this weekend. So Yeah, I'll yeah. definitely be on that again. Yeah. I could go on about soap snobbery, but I won't because <laughs> we've only got so many. It's not hours your in the day. say on the base. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Sorry. <laughs> No, I'm only kidding. But yeah, we, we've we've mm. got time to talk about it. Maybe in your conversation, we'll talk about that. Ooh, yes. Maybe you have to stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, there was questions on people's lips this week about the film crew, and I think everybody wants to know this, um, including us. So Geraldine said, "I'm wondering if the crew are the real Home and Away crew." Um, Jamie also said, "Are the crew on the screen for the movie also the Home and Away crew?" Lots of people asking this question. And lucky for us, friend of the pod, Marty, who also happens to be super, you know, super assistant editor or I can't believe what's his what's his title now? I've forgotten. Is it assistant editor? Or is it editor? Yeah, yeah assistant Jamie. editor. Assistant mm. editor. Sure. Yeah, Marty. I'm going to get that wrong. Yeah. He's in the credits on, on the bloody show that you watch, guys. He's in the credits. He works on the show and he's a legend and he does tweet. Massive and give, advocate. Yeah. Yes. It does give us some answers. So occasionally we ask questions about things that happen on set or, you know, behind the scenes. And Marty is quite happy to divulge some some information to us occasionally, which is, which we really appreciate. So he did actually jump in and answer Jamie's question for us. And he says some of them are the crew that work on the show so some of the people that we saw in front of the camera are normally the people that are behind the camera i and, love that and that's that's really good to see isn't it and I, mm. we kind of asked that question like is the is the equipment and the kit going to be the real equipment in the kit is you know mm. are we going to see stuff that's usually behind the camera is mm. put in front of the camera mm. um marty also says that the names on the call sheet were derived from some of the crew members actual names as well so not necessarily oh, their whole name me. but some of the crew names were sort of maybe there's a surname that's the same or a first name that's the same or something so yeah it's really nice it's really nice to see that maybe we can sort of do a, a game of matching up the call sheet with the uh, the old you know the credits the end credit names that's, that sort of go past at the end <gasps> what now yeah, not now. We've got a podcast. We'll do, oh we'll do it later. Like, oh my god, my heart was out my chest. I was like, "What?" <laughs> not now. Later, later. Yes, mm. so that's, that was really nice to know. Um, and it was something we were speculating on, wasn't it? Like, how much of this is going to blend into? I love that, and you know, the unsung heroes. And this is not just this show; any show. The unsung heroes of the crew. Um, absolutely, yeah. I love that. Uh, next topic of conversation is Kirby from keyboards to surfboards. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's working in the board shop, isn't she? So a few that could comments be on the this. name of her biography. <laughs> mm. Assuming that she dies working in the board shop for the rest of her life. Well, yeah. there's a sniper on the loose. Get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> in memoriam from keyboards to surfboards <laughs> bless her killed her off now um a few comments you on her this week me fall apart. 
next time I make you. No, do not start singing. I'll charge you. I'll penalty you. There'll be a fine. Yeah. Write you a fine for that. Uh, Christine on Facebook says, Kirby's doing me head in. Doing me head in. Uh, 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 uh. But Ellen says, Marley is such a miserable suck. He's so annoying. Yeah, well, well I, we, I thought We sort of said that. Yeah. I thought he was. But then Francis came to his defence and said to Ellen, actually, it's his business. And he took her on to help him out, which she isn't at the moment. So, oh. yeah. Saying that she is she wasn't actually being that helpful to him. Is Francis the new party? Yes, he might be because she comes up again in a minute. Um, Jeff says, sack her. Uh, 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 <laughs> no. Her. She's doing a favour. I don't understand this stance. Yeah. I know she, she'll be getting paid and she, she ought to do as she's told. But, mm. like, it's a really chill job. Like, yeah. flip-flops, sorry, thongs, you know, vibe. Like, yeah. on the beach. Like, get a juice. Let's do a lesson. But like she's keep she's helping him keep his business afloat so that he can accept all these freaking orders and make a load of money. I don't get this. No, no, Sorry. I don't get it. I don't get it either. Um, Jenny stepped in and said Marley needs to set some ground rules on the employer-employee setup. And Francis jumped in again and said, "Here, here." She was like this when she first started working in the diner until they set the ground rules. And once she got it, she was a good employee. And they were sad when she left. So a lot of people saying, you know, she just needs some help. It's just the way she is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And other people Mm. like Jeff. Jeff's just sack her, get rid of her. (laughs) So there's lots of opinions anyway. There's lots of opinions Mm. on on Kirby. Also lots of opinions on Flick. Um, Specifically Flick taking on Eden's vendetta, as Xander puts it, and the Mac and Levi fallout. Mm. So Mm. Facebook, first of all. Stephen says Flick needs to let it go. Yes, Mac is a tart. She had an affair with a married man, broke up her marriage, but it's nothing to do with Flick. Mm. Uh, Philip says, I wish Felicity would move away from the bay. She's a nasty piece of work. <laughs> All right. I did enough yeah. of Felicity. Mm. Enough of her. Mm. Um, you might get your wish, Philip, if if the you know the headlines <laughs> are to be believed. Um, oh, don't. Oh. I know. I'm sorry, sorry, but sorry. Um, Francis says, good decision for Mac and Flick. Very grown up for Felicity to make the first move. This is about the compromise with Xander, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Salt is important to both of them. It gave Flick a purpose in life and gave her direction. Let's hope they can be professional about it and put the personal opinions aside. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it it's about time they grew, they grew up, pulled mm. their knickers up and, and said this because they mm. are grown women. And, yeah, yeah. You know, whatever you think of it, we've all had to work with people we don't want to fucking work with. Do you know what I mean? Got, yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. And you, you've just got to be professional. So it's yeah. about time these were. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just Flick and Mac taking some hits in terms of being childish and, and not professional. We've also got a few comments about Eden as well. So Jamie on Twitter said, "Stop being a childish brat, Eden, you dickhead." This is about the, uh, you know, sell, <laughs> sell the business. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Tickled you that one, has, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Vladimir on Facebook, not on Facebook, sorry, Vladimir on Twitter is also agreeing. Eden mm. needs to grow up. Flick best not mm. sell her business because her friend has issues with her co- co-owner. That's not a thing. It's not a thing. You're right, Vladimir. It's not a thing very bizarre that someone would suggest selling their business <laughs> for your personal vendetta very strange e- um, eden is e- i mean i know a lot of people have said have, have sort of struggled with her haven't they lately and mm. said they can't get <clears throat> you and i were massive eden advocates it's it, i mean it, it's on the internet it's out there recorded so we can't deny it that I still we, love she her. was at, yeah i, just, I do I need to write but about her. Even I'm struggling to defend her now. Like, yeah. there's no defense. So, no, there's mm, no defense. Yeah. She needs to sort of bell up and shut up, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what everyone's mm. saying. So, Jen on, um, on Twitter saying, yeah, at this point, Eden does need to get over it. She's known Imogen for like five seconds. 
yes, it's nasty, but it's just getting daft now. Flick has shown the way. And um, Julie's replied to that and said, yeah, it's her brother's life. I know it, what he's done is bad, but surely she wants her brother to be happy. I mean, that's a good point, isn't it, Julie? Like your family, you know, you, you they may not make the best choices all the time. But even if even if they've made a choice that you don't necessarily agree with, you go, well, as long as you're happy, then I'm happy. Yeah. And she's she's not yeah. there yet. And is it is it because they don't have that close relationship? They have been apart for 10 years and they don't have that bond. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. Is that, mm. is that mm. all part of that storyline? I guess mm. it's yet to be seen whether that gets resolved or not. Yeah. It appears that she's just hung up on... Yeah. This childhood divorce, yeah. but yeah, but that that and that seems to be affecting her judgment in ad, in adulthood. Yes, but she she isn't the only person in the world that no. is in that position. It's actually quite common, and mm. nobody else seems to be like that. Well, I'm not saying nobody, but like you yes. know, a lot of people seem to be able to yeah. get on with things without this sort of hatred in their life. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And David's just reminding everybody, says, Levi and Mac, you are not the victims here. Yes, Mr. David, you're absolutely right. They're not the victims. Um, oh. Yeah. Steve on Facebook has got a few mincing words <laughs> for Levi and Mac. He <laughs> right. says, I wish they would just go swimming and get eaten by a shark. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. There is some speculation on Facebook, though, about Imogen and about the whole, you know, will Mac and Levi be a real couple? Will they last? Uh, right. Will Imogen come back into the picture? And there's been several comments, and I'll read you this one from Kathy saying, oh, I wonder if Imogen will turn out to be pregnant and Levi goes running back to her. And Helen's agreeing, oh, saying, I bet, it's, I bet his wife is pregnant and then what will happen? So this is this is a soap trope, isn't it? Let's face it. Like Baby the, trap. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh it's, God. It's not uncommon that this storyline plays out that way. You know, he has an affair, and then the wife suddenly gets pregnant, and then the affair is over, and and all of that sort of stuff. So it's possible. We've seen it in other places. So. I don't know. They seem to be going. To, for me, it looks like they're going down the we love each other. You can't mm. help who you love. Yes. But. Uh, we're not buying it, are no. we, at this stage? Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we're going to have to stick a pin in that, I think, and see. Because I don't know whether we'll yeah. ever see Imogen again. Because we haven't seen her for weeks, have we? I know. So... That's annoying. How is she not teared up to the bay in a fit of rage? We need that, mm. don't we? Yeah, we keep hearing the conversations that she's having with Eden on the phone, don't we? But mm. Eden's not actually been to see her that we've seen on camera. And Imogen's, mm. as far as I know, hasn't come to the bay either. So are we just mm. going to start phasing her out and we'll just have less phone calls and less mentions of her? I don't know. That's annoying. Mm. It's a missed opportunity, mm. isn't it, that one? Yeah, yeah. Considering they brought her all the way to the bay to have a coffee, you know, they could, <laughs> they, could <laughs> they could bring her back for a showdown that we could have mm. as well. Yeah, maybe come when, on. Maybe when all the shooting stuff's over and, you know, we're back to normal. Um she can bring a gun if she wants. I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. We don't incite violence on the podcast, by the way. <laughs> yes. It's been a long week. We do. Uh, talking about shooting. <laughs> no, we don't. Mm -hmm. Talking about shooting on, on the topic. <laughs> We're hot off the press. When I was doing you saying the bay prep earlier, I didn't have any comments about Stevie and the shooting. So I've had to pull these together very last minute. So you have to forgive me because I haven't read fully all of these comments I'm about to read out. This is breaking news. Coastal breaking Exclusive. news. Exclusive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> breaking news about the stevie marlowe reaction so over to twitter ty on twitter says i was absolutely expecting it to be the classic bodyguard gets shot while trying to protect woman scene this was a great mm. shot not the gunshot the actual shooting scene um so yeah i think that's a good point actually you know when we saw cash running that did cross mm. my mind at one point that he would get in the way of her and the bullet and yeah. sort of get shot and i thought oh is that where we're going with this um, and that is a classic kind of bodyguard. Yeah, but I think we Takes the hit. far more interesting 
next way that we've gone about it is that he's now got the guilt of not saving her, hasn't he? So, yeah, yeah. I'm glad. Uh, it, it's sad, but I'm glad it's this way and it's Stevie because the story that we get from it is far mm. fleshier. Yes. Um, yeah. And Flick's had enough heartache lately. She, you know, she doesn't need a brother. Shut yeah. up. That's true. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, Julie on Twitter says, thankfully, I'd not seen the spoilers and it was an exciting episode. Action packed, in fact. Sad to see Stevie gone so quickly. It was just getting interesting. I thought it was strange that Cash going back home so soon, but didn't expect that. Did Flick leave the door unlocked again? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we had we had a few moments in the show where we were locking doors, and I thought, "Well, so this is the scenario in which people lock the doors on Home and Away." Mm. Okay, active shooter. Yeah, Not Irene though. <laughs> where is Irene? <laughs> Come on, Irene. Wide open. <laughs> yeah, that door's been wide open for two weeks, and no one's home. Yeah, yeah. Mm. There could be all sorts of rifles poking in there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, dearie me. Um, okay, let's have a look for some more tweets. So, Mr. David said he might have something in his eye and some sad emoji faces. Yeah, similar to you then, really yeah. affected here. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think a lot of mm. us are bought into Stevie. Um, but Mr. David said it was a fabulous episode of Home and Away, soap at its best, in his opinion. So, <gasps> yes, yeah. Uh, 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 Spoilers, but tune in for Sophie's your say on the base. She agrees with you. Yeah. No, Sophie's in combo with, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mr. Davis just gutted. He said Stevie was a great character. She did not deserve this. I'm also worried about how this will impact on cash. Yes, I'm aware this is a soap, but I cannot help feeling a bit teary-eyed at the moment. I was as well, David. You're not on your own. <sighs> I did get I did get a bit choked up over this scene. I'll be honest. Um, like I say, ha- haven't done for a while. Have actually guffawed laughing at some other screen deaths that we've had in the last couple of years, um, but not this one. <laughs> this one made me really sad. So, mm. yeah, agreed. Mm. Uh, Joe Lauren on Twitter says, "Shocked and pleased that I've avoided any spoilers. It seems to have come out of nowhere." Yeah. Do you know what? This is funny, this, people mentioning spoilers. Obviously, we're constantly ruined because we're six weeks behind Oz or whatever, eight yes. weeks or whatever. Yeah. Um, but isn't it funny how when people don't see stuff, mm. they're way more invested? Yes. Yeah. It's nice not to... I find it hard to avoid the spoilers, I'll be honest, because obviously I do... I look mm. at the hashtag for your say on the bay. I go on back to the bay yeah. website to get pictures for the for the um, you know tweet along and stuff like that. So mm. I do see stuff and I do try and pretend I haven't seen it. Sometimes I'm successful, but then when it's a big storyline like this, like I remember seeing um, on back to the bay something about Stevie Marlowe's death, and I was like, oh great, I already know now. Great, yeah. and I couldn't I couldn't blank that out. So I have known for a yeah. couple of weeks about it. So do you think that has impacted your experience of tonight's episode do you think that is are you still know. sort of felt the rush I, i'd the rather have been, i'd rather have watched it live and not know what was happening I, obviously i'd much rather know that i'd rather have seen it and not have to not sort of know okay i know she's going to be shot and i know she's going to die it would have been yeah. nice to watch it completely blank but actually mm. Be- I'd, because I already knew that she was going to die, I kind of expected that I was prepared for it and I was prepared to watch it and I was just going to be like, okay, well, this is how it happens. And I wasn't. I was actually really still moved by it. Um, so I don't know whether I would have been even more in bits if I hadn't known. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I, did, I did get choked up and I did get a bit teary-eyed and I knew it was coming, so... Would I have been worse if I if it'd been a complete shock? I don't know. Mm. Hard to say, isn't interesting. it? Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Because back in the day, pre pod years, mm. you know, I would if there's something if there was a storyline coming up that was yeah. huge, I would come off social media for home and away. Yeah. I wouldn't touch it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the nature of being a podcast about it. We we can't we don't have that luxury anymore. No, um, <laughs> no. 
I am just wondering. It's, it's interesting that people are commenting. I didn't see this coming. Mm. You know, that that must feel so good as a viewer. Oh yeah. I've forgotten what that feels like. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what that feels like mm. anymore either. But mm. kind of jealous. Kind of wish I could mm. could watch it like that, sort of more passively. Yeah, it'd be great. Don't quit. This is better. Stop it. <laughs> You're not resigning. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my resignation letter. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, obviously, friend of the of the pod, JK from the neighborhood rewatch has we've converted him successfully, I believe. <gasps> because oh he's now he's now joining Have you the got tweet comments? Along. Oh yes. my god. I hope he listens to this. So Come on. we we invited him on for one uh your sound of May. And then since then he's watched about five weeks worth of Home and Away, I think, if I if my tally's right. And now he's joining the tweet along on a random Friday night. So I think we say that he's a converted home and away fan. What do we think? Mm. We say that? Mm. I do. I do. He so, can't tell his people, but yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, so newly converted home and away super fan, JK, has tweeted <laughs> <laughs> Genuine shock, but dramatically also a smart choice that has repercussions for so much of the cast. Some would say the drama is unmissable. Unmissable drama? I mean, yeah. that's, that's kind of the tagline for Home and Away, isn't it? So there's a bit of a tongue-in-cheek there. But I think he's right. The repercussions of the choice mm. that they've gone with, the person that, you know, ended up being the target. Mm-mm-mm. It's going to be, it's gonna be yeah. interesting. He gonna be is interesting. hook, line and sinker. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. And then we've got a tweet from Jamie. Jamie says, RIP Stevie, you were a great character. I will miss you. She was, she, uh, this This actually backs up something you talk about, J.K. So Jamie mentions how, m- what a great character she is. J.K., t- mm. when he came on this podcast, you know, when you had your week off. Yeah. And J.K. came on, he said, you don't get characters like her in soap. Like yeah. she's she, in the universe. She's this mad celebrity. And that is really interesting. Yeah. Like it, it's a character you don't get. Yes. Um, so maybe that helps with people can you know getting in, getting invested yeah i think i just think it helps that she was obviously a brilliant actress you know she yeah. she portrayed that that, that character really well yeah 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 and she was a breath of fresh air in terms of a, of a character um and also i think it is down to the fact that it hasn't felt like block storytelling it hasn't felt like the movie's going over happening over here and everything else is happening over here She's blended mm. with, I mean, I, I, it's hard to press to find someone she hasn't spoken to in her short time on the show. She's actually got around most of the bay and integrated yeah. with most of the bay. And that's quite unusual for a guest character. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's helped us to sort of warm to her and take her on. I think and, you're yeah. right. Yeah. It's the integration, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Which sometimes we get spot on on Home and Away and sometimes we don't. You know, it's it can be hit and miss. Yeah, true. So yeah, and then to end this week's you are sound the bay. Jamie just summing up the end of the week for us here with one line: "Oh shit, what a cliffhanger!" <laughs> oh, that cliffhanger though. I know. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. I am. You know, I literally cannot wait till Monday. I know. Jamie can't by the sound of it. No, none of us can. Can't breathe until Monday now. Hold me in your arms, don't let-